Hey, Daisy. Daisy is a very excitable girl. And, uh, girl, her uh, pupils look perfect. Um, one of the things she, uh, we need to do is to build in more self-control. And I look for ways that we can add a little bit of structure to everyday repeatable tasks. Because she's in a kennel, this gives us a great opportunity to help her practice being calm, exiting the kennel. Um, a dog, uh, a lot of humans confuse excited for happy when it comes to dogs, but excited is an unbalanced state of mind, just like any others. And so we're not going to be at our best when we're in an unbalanced state of mind. So because we have the kennel, what the guardian is doing now is waiting for her to sit, and then she lets her out of the kennel. What I do is actually come over, and I'm going to open the kennel door here in a sec, but she's not allowed to leave until she lays down. I do not tell her to sit, and I don't tell her to lay down. Um, when she sits, I'm going to take one step backwards. If she starts to come forward, I rush towards her and hiss as my way of saying no. And when she sits, I take a big step backwards. When she sits, I'm not telling her to sit. When she sits and, I, and I'm blocking the exit, because what I'm going to do is open it and stand and keep my feet here to block her from exiting. Um, now, if she sits, that's her way of saying, I'm challenging you less. So I take a step backwards of saying, because you're challenging me less, I move further away from blocking the door. As soon as she lays down, I call her out of the kennel. Laying down is a much calmer way of being. Um, well, not calmer. I mean, a dog can be excited. But usually if it's in, in this sort of context, when a dog lays down, it's their way of saying, man, I surrender. So when I had a dog, she's kind of a black lab mix. Um, she was going through $2,000 leather couches. And I can't afford to rebuy $2,000 leather couches more than twice. So what, after the second one, I got a kennel, started kenneling her, and when I got to the point where I would come home, I would open the door and uh, eventually get to the point where I could open it, just walk it, open it all the way, then go to the bathroom, change clothes, take a shower. She wasn't allowed to leave the kennel until I gave her the command to exit the kennel. This way, there's nothing blocking her. She's developing self-control with this. So I'm going to attempt to do this because of her reactivity. I, don't, I think I'll be able to open the door, but we'll, I might have to close it uh, really quickly. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to have the guardian kind of come and sit over here uh, so that she can kind of watch this and uh, so we can kind of see it from the side. So uh, now as I get up, you see she got up, she's excited. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to put my foot here if you're worried about the dog pushing its way out. So you see she's a little bit excited. So I'm going to open it just a little bit. So I'm just waiting. Now she's, she's calm. Normally, when we would do this, I would have had us leave and then come and re put her in the kennel and then recreate coming home. But in this case, since she's a little bit reactive, I don't want to go to that level of intensity. So that's why I'm doing it here. So I'm using this kennel up against my leg because I'm not 100% sure what she's going to do. If she were to react, I could just step to the side and close the kennel and keep her in there and everyone would remain safe. Again, I don't think she's aggressive. I think that she's just confused as to her position. I think she's identified, I have a big strong bark and I can move people around. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for her to LAY. I'm not telling her to LAY. I'm not uh, you know, giving her any commands. Now normally when I do this, the dog is standing up. I mentioned, uh, I can't remember if I mentioned off camera or on camera, but as soon as the dog sits, I usually take a step backwards. She stayed seated throughout this whole process. There we go. So now she's up. So she's looking at me, she's waiting for me to give her a trigger. Now she's staring a little bit, it's hard for me to see, I could just see it there. Because of the glare, I couldn't see her pupils. A dilated pupil would mean she's worked up or excited. Now, the door is open. She could theoretically try to push and shove her way out, which I'm kind of surprised she hasn't. Um, now if you're worried about this, you could just close the door off to the side. I usually would step in here. The guardian, I would have her step directly in here and just use her legs to block her from exiting. She's not worried about doing that. For me, with this motion, she may turn around and nip, and so I'm kind of leaving it. Oh, there we go. So I move a little bit back because she kind of resigned and sat back a little bit. That's an indication that she's not trying to come out. So I was ready to close the door if I needed to. The hiss was sufficient. So I went through the escalating consequences with the guardian off camera. This is kind of a version of using those. Now you see, she's, she's nice and relaxed. There we go. I'm so happy to be out of the kennel. So what we're basically teaching her is the only way to exit the kennel is being calm. Sit. So 
like, no, you've been bossing me around. She, uh, we can't see her because she's under the camera. Don't worry about paying, but she laid down. It's another good sign that she feels comfortable. So this is how I'd like the guardian to let her exit out of the kennel each time. So use the hiss. Perfect. So uh, careful you don't block with your fingers um, because your hand is close. Um, so basically, if we get in the habit of doing this, at first you're going to have to stand. You're gonna, basically, what I would have done is open it and stood like right here. When she sat down, I take one step back. When she take, when she, and then if she stays there, I would take another step back. Anytime she started coming forward, I would hiss and rush forward really quickly as my way of saying no. And as soon as she lays down, I take a knee and I tell her to COI me, give her the treat when she comes out. So she understands I can't exit the kennel without permission. Now eventually what you'll be able to do is come home, open the kennel door like this, go in your bedroom, change clothes, come in, go to your bathroom, wash your hands. She stays in there, the kennel door is open. So there's nothing for her that's restraining her other than her respect for you as an authority figure and her own willpower. And so then she gets to leave the kennel only with permission. And when she does this, you're only giving her permission when she is nice and calm. Uh, now I have other videos on doggoneproblems.com. If you uh, click on dog training tips on the right side of the page, there's a box that says search. You might want to put in uh, uh, kennel exercise or just the word kennel. Write-ups will come up where I've had other dogs with these issues because I was quasi concerned that she might react. I wasn't doing the full version of it, so you might have another couple of uh, videos where it does show me taking that step back, step back, and the dog tries to come forward, I hiss and rush forward as my way of communicating it. But this is how you can use uh, letting your dog exit the kennel in a calm way to help your dog develop a little bit more self-control.